Hey everyone, I am Sharon Ann Hamilton and I'm here today to go through a mess of information on 10 final arrangements mistakes that could cause a family war. And the reason I know this is because I have seen it. So come along for the ride. So here we go, 10 estate planning mistakes. Let me start with the beginning here. Uh, slideshow, play from start, okay. The 10 final arrangements mistakes that can cause a family war. Who am I? I am Sharon Ann Hamilton, as I said. I have a 27 year career with American Express companies as a financial advisor, and I help many people with their estate plans and their final arrangements plans. And the ones that had the things done the opposite, well, I've seen two sides of the story. So I'll be talking about that today, a story. I also have a master's in, my credentials are master's in business administration. I have a certified financial planning designation and I'm now retired from that work. I have a master's in financial, master of science in financial services, and I am a certified money coach. I am here today to hopefully help you open your eyes on final arrangements plans and how important they are and how um, sad it is when people don't make those arrangements. So I also have written three books and they're up on Amazon under my name. The last one is called The Secret to Right Sizing. And it's all about how we design in our lives to have exactly, exactly the right amount of space and things around us that support the decisions that we make in our current lifestyle, wherever we are. Why would you wanna take care of this right now? I have to tell you, this is, um, the greatest gift of love you can give to your family members is to take care of these things in advance and in writing. I'll be talking about a case study, Mary Johnson and her adult children, and I'll tell you what happened when she didn't do these things. And um, I'll talk about the 10 mistakes and then what you can do about them right now if you're so inclined. If you have family members who are getting older and or even yourselves, it is a good idea to take care of these things. I'll get through the material as quickly as possible and encourage you to uh, avoid making the 10 mistakes that cause a family war. This is Mary, she's 92 years old. Her husband passed away three months ago. She was a teacher and she has a sizable estate to pass on to her family. Her goals are to treat everyone equally and to send their grandchildren to college or trade school, whatever they wish, and to provide for Fifi. Her adult children, Bob is 72, he's retired. He's a retired uh, Walmart executive. He lives in San Francisco and he plays golf all the time. He just loves to golf. Judy is age 63. She's a PhD and a school administrator and her hobby is gardening and she, she'll be retiring in a couple of years. Patsy, the free spirit Patsy is 58 and she makes tie dye and bead jewelry and teaches yoga and she migrates. She's a snowbird from Boise, Idaho to Sedona, Arizona. She does win awards for her beadwork. She's quite talented and she makes large commissions from celebrities for her jewelry. And of course, the beloved Fifi. Let's not forget Fifi. So Mary makes plans. In her mind, she weaves a plan about her final arrangements so that when it, the time when it's time to die, she decided she's just not going to wake up. No lingering. She decides no funeral, no viewing, no graveside, no grave. She dreams of her family and friends gathering around in their most colorful clothing, around tables of wonderful, spicy and exotic food she herself savored. World music with happy rhythm has everyone tapping their toes, 
Good wine flows freely. Guests chat about how much Mary meant to them and how sorry she is they are that she is gone. A few tears are shed. Each person remembers out loud, aloud about a time when Mary's advice was right on target. Funny stories are trotted out and shared. There is much laughter and tears in enjoyment of being together and of being alive. Mary pictures herself at her own party, cremains in a bio urn with a beautiful jacaranda tree ready to plant on a city tree in street in La Mesa, along with a memorial pack, plaque. At day's end, family and friends smile and laugh and hug each other goodbye. Then one day, boom, she has a stroke. What happens? All the kids gather around. Bob, when they're, they're in the hospital room and, and it doesn't look good. She's in a coma. Mary's in a coma, so they're talking about final arrangements. Bob wants a traditional funeral and is willing to commit $30,000 of the estate money. Judy wants a sim simple funeral and she thinks it should cost no more than $10,000. And Patsy wants a hippie fun funeral and it's gonna cost $500. Anyway, they all disagree. Now it's war because to be fair to all of her children, Mary makes Bob and June and Pat Patsy co-trustees of her estate. This means they all get to make they get to make all decisions jointly, so they have to agree. And this is a recipe for a family war, sadly. The mistake number one that Mary did was she didn't put anything down in writing. And families are the most vulnerable at this time. Believe it or not, funerals are big business. Um, in the funeral industry, I'm going to, hmm, okay. In the funeral industry, what, what we know by looking at the statistics and research is that sadly, if you add up um, the profits of the movie industry to the profits of the porn industry, they do not even equal the amount of profits in the funeral industry. People can pay 10, 20, $30,000 and they're at their most vulnerable and they make decisions based on either what they think other people are gonna think or what they think mom or dad would have wanted. And they're very rarely um, logical decisions or even affordable decisions in, the, in view of the family's financial situation. Make no mistake, funerals are big business. Mistake number two, let everyone guess about your life and times. Do you know you can write your obituary in advance or you can write whatever you want to share about what your life has meant? Instead of the regular statistics of where a person was born and how many brothers and sisters they have and what they did for their life um, uh, career, it could be things like the most memorable trip a person ever took. What was the greatest Christmas someone had? What was the biggest gift that a person has given or what skill or talent that you have developed over the course of your life? These things are the things that mean the most to, for example, to Mary, but she never told anyone or wrote down what was important to her. So therefore, the obituary reads just like everyone else's, the facts and none of the feelings or none of the accomplishments that Mary had over her life. Mistake number three, let them guess. Well, what kind of um, visit, what kind of a funeral did Mary really want? Did she want um, a visitation, which is normally done the day before a funeral in a funeral home? Did she want a funeral in a funeral home, open casket or closed casket or graveside only? Right now it's up in the air and the three co-trustees have to figure it out together. Number four, not choosing the type of burial. Now this is, um, I don't know, I guess I have a, 
strange sense of investigation because I am fascinated with burial customs. Of course, we have the traditional and we have uh, cremation and there is something called a natural burial and a natural burial would be, um, a, and there's one here in Washington, it's called White Feather, I think, no, White Eagle. And um, it's a large preserve of land and the, it's acreage. And what you do is you go out and you pick a place you would like to be buried and you pay for this in advance. And when the time comes, uh, the company, the burial company will pick you up put you in a shroud and or a small um, a pine casket and actually your relatives could come and dig the hole if you want them to or if they want to and they can also cover up the hole afterwards and a little marker that's pretty natural and so they have hiking trails through the woods there and and horseback riding trails so it's very natural and just like it used to be in the ancient times, just like you bury people where they died. So the, uh, this uh, made me laugh, but you can actually, you might have read about this, but you can have your body compressed under high pressure and, and turn it into a diamond. So, um, so you can give your, you can cut it into smaller pieces and give a piece to each child if you want. Another thing I read about was a, it's called, it's a shaker table. And this was originated in Switzerland. And so what happens is a body is put on a shaker table and shake high speed shaking back and forth until it's reduced to some kind of a pink like powder dust. And the idea is the person would put that some powder into small vials and then give it out to their family members so they can remember <clears throat> you when you're gone. Have the evidence. Um, the last thing I read was something called NOR, uh, natural organic reduction. And these are tubes that um, house the person's body and then some gases are put into it. And after 90 days, the body is completely disintegrated into compost and then it becomes compost wherever anybody wants to put it. Kind of interesting customs. So I'm not saying that it's your custom, but if you know about it and maybe it might be it might be appealing to you rather than being um, in a graveyard <laughs> somewhere with a bunch of other people. Well, anyway, everyone has their own opinions about that. But now Bob and Judy and, and, and Patsy have to decide together what to do with mom's body. Another thing is uh, um, they argue about this. Uh, they say, mom said that she wanted to donate her eyes over there. And um, so if, if, if mom mentions different uh, wishes and there's nothing in writing, how can the children agree if only one hears it? Um, so maybe mom wanted to donate. Maybe she wanted to give her body to a teaching hospital, or maybe she didn't want to donate anything at all. But now all three children have to agree on what's going to be done with donations. I have to say, you can do this alone. You can figure it out by yourself. You can sit down with your partner or uh, uh, your daughter or son. You can totally write these things down in advance. You, you can do this alone, but you don't have to. If you don't have anyone that can help you, I'd be happy to help you. That's one of the one of my jobs over the years is to coach people in such things. The reason the what I've noticed with people who have taken the time to take care of these things in advance is they have such peace of mind about it. They can sleep well knowing that their family will not have any burdens at all when they're not around anymore. Mistake number six, tell different ideas to each child. Tell them your, tell each child you have your final wishes that are different. You give heirlooms to one but not the other or you have an outdated will. All of these things are ripe for misunderstandings and will definitely set up um, 
discord in the family as they try to move forward with, with what they want for their mom or what they think their mom wanted for herself. Number seven, tell your kids what you want, but do not put it in writing. So this is one thing that's pervasive in all these mistakes that Mary did is she told him what she wanted. She told him what she imagined, but at different times over a number of years. And who remembers what? Memories are faulty, but when it's not put in writing, it's just ripe for um, misunderstanding. The Another thing is, don't let your, uh, Mary did not let her children know where she wanted to be buried. So Bob assumed that her, that his mother was going to be buried in San Francisco so he could visit it quite a lot. Now, Judy lives in Washington and she didn't think that that was going to be such a good idea. And Patsy didn't think her mom would want to be buried in any cemetery that she wanted to be scattered to the four winds. So you can see that um, by not, uh, stating where you want to be buried, you can set up problems for your kids. Not allocating funds for burial. Uh, whatever the practice is, whatever a person decides to do from natural burials to a regular full-fledged traditional burial, it's going to cost money. So out of the estate, um, either with insurance or pre-purchasing or pre-planning of uh, your funeral, um, these funds will need to come out of your estate or they're going to be a burden for your children. A lot of times parents just don't have much when they pass away. And so their, their children end up paying the piper. And I've seen many Facebook fundraisers to raise money for mom or dad's funeral and pretty, very, very sad, a sad, sad thing. And if there are funds, um, if you name your executor without authorizing funds to be paid to the executor to cover the work involved. Well, it's a burden because if let's say Judy was the executor and she has a job, well, she would have to take days off of work, drive over to wherever her mom's home is and uh, take care of everything, not only the final arrangements, um, but all of the, is the total estate, it's very, um, it's a burden, it really is. So um, paying the executor and when the work is done, the attorney would release the money uh, and would be able to control that the work is done. It wouldn't come from uh, the other people in, um, in the estate. Oh, mistake number 11. It's not 10 mistakes. There's no plan for Fifi. Bob can't handle Fifi because he's out on the golf course all the time and he doesn't want her anyway. Judy can't handle because she's working all the time. There's no one to take care of this dog at home. It's used to company all the time. Patsy loves Fifi, but how can Fifi fit with her migratory patterns? Um, it just doesn't work. So Fifi is likely to end up in a shelter. And I don't, I'm right now we're dog hunting. And it's heartbreaking how many senior dogs are in shelters because no one could or would take the dog after the owner passed away. So what do you think happens next? Are they going to go to war? Are they going to go to court? Are they going to involve attorneys to determine what's going to happen and who's going to, who's going to, mm, Wait, who's going to win this war? Nobody is going to win this war. Nobody. But as they're standing, sitting around, kicking these things around, what are we going to do? And oh, whoa, and um, very emotionally upset. They notice that Mary in bed is starting to move. <gasps> Guess what? She, she, she moves and they call the doctors in and she moves some more and she opens her eyes and she heard everything. Every single thing that was said, every single argument that they had, she heard it. She heard how her children were trying to work things out according to what they thought she wanted. 
without having anything in writing. So the first thing that she does when she wakes up is she says, give me a pen and paper. I want to write it down. What am I, what my wishes are before anything else happens. So she wakes up, she has a second chance to make it right, but not everybody does. And I'm saying to you right now, I'm going to urge you, no matter what your age, um, death can happen anytime. If you don't have your final wishes written down, it's a burden for your family. When you write your final wishes down, it's a gift of your heart for your family. So do it. If you need some help, let me know. Here's how you can find me, actually. Put your plan in writing. So you can find me at tinylessons1 at gmail.com. It's very simple. Send me an email and we will get together on the phone and we will work out a plan of action for you. It usually takes one or two uh, meeting, phone meetings and we can have your plan in writing. Um, very affordable because I want everybody in the world to have their plan in writing. Okay, well, thank you for attending. Let me see, stop share. Thank you for attending this little class and I hope to see you soon. I am full of these ideas, so stay tuned.